How many of us, if you come to church, you are praying, Oh God, I want to testify. How many of us? You know, there are some people who are not expecting God to give them a miracle. And so they don't, they don't even think of them testifying. It's not even in their mind. It's not even in their thoughts. Oh, no, no. I just want God to give me a miracle. Do you know that if you pray and ask God, Lord, give me a miracle, I want to testify of your goodness. I want to testify of your power. I want to testify of your miracle. Do you know what happened? God will surely give you a miracle. Because in your heart, you want to give him all the glory. In your heart, you want to praise him in public. Hallelujah. I want to preach on the topic, the cry of faith that can produce deliverance. The cry of faith that can produce deliverance. One thing I want to say is this. Your mouth is very, very important if you truly want deliverance. For your information, deliverance is being set free from captivity. Many of us, we don't have sickness in our body. We don't have problem in our body we don't we don't have sickness it was just like that but one way or the other some people are under captivity of the devil and i want to let you know being captive of the devil is worse than sickness when you are sick you have the hospital to run to you can run to the hospital. They will give you injection. They will give you medicine and you'll be okay. But if you have demonic problem, you are held captive by demons and you need deliverance, you can't go to the hospital. If you go, if it get too worse, they will be pumping some kind of injection or drugs that will t- knock you off with serious side effects that will reduce your energy and make you like dummy, like imbecile. Because they will try to inject things in your body to cool you down. And it's cooling everything in you down. Because it has to do with demonic problem, spiritual problem. There are some cases that there is no hope anywhere except in God's house. Maybe some night, terrible nightmare, bad dreams. Maybe some kind of spiritual attack that has held you from progress in life. Where will you go? Will you tell the doctor to treat you? Say, doctor, treat me. Because I don't know why every man that wants to marry me end up dis- disappointing me. Is there any drug they will give you? Answer me. There's nothing. Where will you go for treatment if you've been facing financial crisis, demon messing up your, your job, poverty? All kind of things. They are induced by spirits, by demons. And it's only God that you can run to. There are some cases that you know very well. Maybe a woman looking for a child. Somebody who is a drunk or a drunkard. Somebody who is into drugs. Somebody who is into some kind of anger spirit. Somebody's into wayward life. You may think it's okay to give the person some kind of treatment, but it's spiritual, and it's only prayer that cannot pull those things out. Why are we not going forward in life? 
Why are things not working the way it should work? Why is it there's problem in life, in marriage, in career, in your profession, in finance, among the children? It's because demons have held them captive. And again, some of these things can also bring out and result to all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. But one thing I want to let you know, if you truly want your freedom, the miracle starts from your mouth. Your mouth is very important because you are what you say. What you speak out of your mouth will either hold you bondage or bring forth deliverance to your life. The Bible says you will be justified or condemned by what comes out of your mouth. Your word can save you or destroy you. And don't forget that when God was creating the word, he created the word with the words that came out of his mouth. And you, if you want to change the arena of your life, it is also by words that will come out of your mouth. By words that will come out of your mouth. If wrong words comes out of your mouth, you will be enslaved. You will be in bondage. You will be in trouble for a long time. Obviously, a man is saved or born again by the kind of word he or she is speaking out from his mouth. The Bible says, if you shall confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, you shall be saved. So if you don't confess Jesus as Lord, how will you be saved? So you see, when faith is put into action, your words matters a lot. The woman was going to meet Jesus. He said, if I, she said it. He said, if I but can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She said it from her mouth over and over. So when the day she had a point to touch Jesus' cloth, instantly the sickness she has been having for years disappeared. How come that sickness disappeared? She said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. David was confronted with Goliath and he, he said from his mouth, I will cut your neck and give you to the base of the air to feed on. He said it. He said, my God shall fight for me and I will kill you today. How can a young boy of about 20 years boast and talk to a man that is a warrior and is a terror to all the nations around. David killed him with the words of his mouth. So your words matters a lot. What do you usually say out of your mouth? Or before you came here, have you said over and over from your mouth, I am going to this program organized by Ernest Odoba. He is going to pray and I will be healed. I'm going to be delivered. If you don't come with a mind of being delivered, you can't be delivered. You pray for someone who is a drug addict. You pray for someone who is into Yahoo or to, into all kind of stupid, sinful activities. Maybe the mother, the father brought the child to, to church. And you pray, if the boy or the girl has not determined in his life or her life 
to quit that thing and say it, I want to be delivered. When the man of God prays for me, I will be free from pornography. When he prays for me, I will be free from these stupid things I'm doing. If you don't say it in your mouth, from your mouth, when a man of God stands before you to pray, it looks as if he's doing nothing because you have not connected your spirit to be healed and to be delivered. Now, you discover that many of us, like in James chapter 4 verse 7, James chapter 4 verse 7, we have failed to resist the devil. The Bible says resist the devil and the devil will flee from you. Now, in Isaiah chapter 52, verse 2, God says there, he said, shake thyself from the dust. You have to do the shaking. Nobody will do it for you. Shake yourself from the dust. Determine you're going to get out from the dust. You have been held captive by the devil too long. You have been on the ground, under attack, not enjoying your life, facing so much setback in life, facing so much problems, and you just don't know what to do. God said, shake up yourself from the dust. If you analyze, that's what the Bible says, shake up yourself. And arise from the dust. You have been in the ground for too long. You have been buried for too long. You have been in the pit for too long. Things have not been working for too long. You see, uh, check yourself. Arise. Then sit down like a king. That's what the Bible says. Say, oh Jerusalem, lose thyself from the bands of thy neck. O captive daughters of Zion, lose yourself from the bound on your neck. What are the bound the devil has put on your neck? It's not everybody you see walking in the street. You think everything is okay. No. We are just right now in that Isaiah chapter 52, verse 2. Take it down and go home and read it later. Isaiah 52, verse 2. Not everybody you see on the street, you think it's okay. There are some people you see, they don't wear anything on the neck, but there are things on the neck. Chains, they are chained by the devil. There are people you see today, they are waving their hand like this, but they actually tied their hand. Their hands were tied. There are some people you see today, they look beautiful, their facial appearance. They smile, they dress well, but in the other way, they've used death to plaster their body. Plaster their body. That only those who want to help them will eventually see it. Only those who want to marry them will eventually see it. Only those who want to give them contract will eventually see it. And you say the person is good. And the person keeps promising you will turn away, it will, will be cutting your cords. Because what the person is seeing is not the glory you have. It's seeing something else. I'm glad to announce to you if you're under captivity before, it shall be broken in the name of Jesus. That's why 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 26. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 26. And that they might recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Who have taken captive by him at his will. Recover. Recover. Lift up you and say, I will recover all. I can't hear your voice. Shout, say, I will recover all. He said that they might recover. Recover. That's what Paul is saying when he wrote to Timothy. He said that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Who have taken captive by his him at his will he held them captive listen to me 
if the devil has held you captive in according to his own will today you shall be loose i say you shall be loose i say you shall be loose who would be the first person to receive deliverance here who is the first person to receive deliverance today sit down when deliverance takes place things start working well things start working well the sickness leaves the disease leaves i was telling somebody recently i said there are some people they have some kind of sickness and the sickness may find it difficult to go not because god is not willing but the kind of sickness has a complicated issue that the person we need to speak something out of their mouth the bible says if you confess then god will forgive when you see we doing some prayer and the mouth of the person is open and the person start confessing something confesses something if you cooperate with the pastor and the person confess there's hope for the person but the person you hold the mouth and refuse when something is coming out of the mouth he uses his own intellect to hold it his own will to hold it when the confession is coming out open the mouth talk, confess because god shows mercy and make sure even when the person is not in the right mood make sure talk to touch the devil that is causing the sickness in the person's life causing the barrier in the person's life and the person start confessing out that means it's a merciful thing very merciful when it happens the person is really really loved by god because he wants to foster that devil or that sickness out of the person's life but if person refused to confess and held his mouth or held his heart the sickness will still remain the problem will still remain and that is why confession is very very important if you confess god say i will forgive if you confess then you are closer to the miracle so the aspect of repentance restitution confession is very important to receive certain healing and certain deliverance somebody asked me why is this some some people bad things happen to people some people who you know that they are good and why is it they don't it's big some of them and in most cases there are things either they don't know it or they know it and they are hiding it and they are holding it and that is why the case is not handled and the bad stuff still happening and if you don't even know it you have the ability to ask god say god this thing that is happening to my life why what can i do about it what is responsible show me the way out of it god is going to show you but if you don't ask you don't or maybe it's god say you know it and you've not talked how do you think you've not submitted yourself for deliverance from freedom you know it and you don't want to talk and god will not speak to you because he needs god say you know it why are you asking me to to show you again you see that's what the bible says in that second timothy chapter 2 verse 26 that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who have taken them captive by its own way how will you get yourself recovered by cooperating with the spirit as many as are led to the promptness of the spirit as many that are led by the push of the holy spirit as many as are led by what the holy ghost is dropping in their mind dropping their heart and they obey what the spirit drop in their mind it could be something simple go out and invite people to church or go out and evangelize or pay your tithes or do something in the church do something maybe that is a simple instruction god is waiting for you and he has dropped it in your spirit so that you obey and you refuse to obey 
And that's the thing. I will keep this thing for a while. And you, you say, you are waiting for God. And God says, I'm waiting for you. Now, when you look at Psalm 126, verse 4. Psalm 126, verse 4. Turn again our captivity, O Lord. As a stream in the south, verse 5. They that sow in tears shall reap in what? In joy. Have you seen a woman crying before? Have you seen a man crying before? Crying? Making noise? Many of you have cried before. He said, as you you sow in tears, he said, you will come back reaping in joy. Verse 6 say, he that goeth forth and weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing and bring his sheep with him. How do you weep? So in tears, when there is a problem and you are crying out for help. If you see people who can cry out, the problem is not strong yet. But when the problem is strong, he or she will cry out. When you tell somebody, let's go to church for prayer, for healing, for this. And I won't go. Not, the problem is not hard yet. But when the problem becomes hard, you will run down to church. Some of you, when you were young in age, maybe 15 years old, 16 years old, 20 years old, your mother tells you something. No, no. No, mommy, you don't. You don't know my age. Don't, don't talk to me that way. You do things on your own. Your father tells you, so you just disobey. You become rude, stubborn. Your mother is crying. Your father is crying. You wonder what's, what's your, why, what's making my mother to cry? My father, I'm enjoying myself. They're just disturbing my life. Why should they? Do? That's what you are thinking because you are 15 and 16 years old. And you become rude and stubborn because what your father or your mother is telling you see look look weird to you look stupid to you and you are busy catching fun and your mother or father tell you not to do such things do you know what happened no problem when you become 35 years old your mother will not be there to talk to you when you are 40 years old your mother will not be there to talk to you. It is that you will regret for all those things your father told you when you were 10 years old. The first thing you refuse to fast, when they told you to fast when you are 15 years old, you won't fast. You fast 10 o'clock, your eyes hungry. I will tell you, that time will come. You'll be fasting three days dry fasting. Nobody will tell you. You will be the one telling yourself, three days fasting. Because now, Life is now being real to you. Now, you now know that it is not the as usual as it used to be again. Now, you now know. Then they say, let's pray for demon, cast out devil. Jesus, you are sleeping. Time will come. Sleep, you will not sleep. You will be doing the binding and losing. Even there is nobody leading you in prayer. Because you have let yourself given yourself to being captive by the devil at his own will then you will not cry that time you will cry you already 35 you will cry you will think about the mistakes and the things foolish things you did many years ago you will not be regret what make me to do this things you begin to feel the pain of everything you did now listen to me time will come don't wait for the time to cry don't wait. It is now you feast things up now. So that you don't cry. You don't cry that time. So young boys and young girls, wait. Let them go to church. Say, I won't go to church. I won't go to church. I won't go to church. I won't go and play football. I want to do something. I want to play to my hair. I want to I want to go to friend. They carry their phone. They are doing time will come. They will not even remember where their phone is. They will be in the church before everybody. That's when they want to say, I want to change this one. I want to do this one. I want to. Then it will be a problem. Now. Is a time for you to put things together. The Bible says, He that goeth forth weeping, weeping, you must 
come to a situation where you you know you needed the miracle of God. You will cry before God. You will seek the face of God. You will be desperate. Just look at the story of the blind baptism. I like giving that story. The blind baptism was in the street begging. Along with other beggars. Some are content with the money they are giving them every morning. In every afternoon, every evening. But blind baptism felt that I can't remain in this situation any longer. So only him among other blind people was shouting. Only him among other blind was shouting. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. He is called beggars. Haba, no let you day here. Keep quiet. Even the disciples of Jesus told him, say, the master is not listening to you. Just keep quiet. The Bible says, the more they tell him to keep quiet, he cried the more a great deal. He knows what he's looking for. Do you know, when he cried the first time, do you think Jesus is deaf? Do you think God is deaf? You mean God don't hear the first cry? He hears the first cry. If you pray once and you don't see any solution, if you pray two times, you don't see any solution, not that God did not hear you, but he has not seen the desperation in your heart yet. He has not seen the seriousness in your heart. The Bible says the man put it in jar two and shouted the more. It was not working. Put it in jar three. Shouted the more a great deal. When the worst become worse, his, his own disciples say, keep quiet. He put it in jar five. He shouted, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And Jesus came to him. That could surprise you. Jesus knew everything. And yet Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Even if Jesus no know, he could see him that he's blind. Everybody knows he's blind. Everybody knows he's blind. Yet Jesus did not use that to, and just start praying for him. He said, what do you want me to do for you? The man did not miss his word. He don't say, Jesus, don't you see that I'm blind? No. He said, Jesus, that my sight might be recovered. Jesus touched him. Look at that man, on that woman again. The Serophician woman. He was following Jesus. He was crying. Not just crying in one place. was crying, following Jesus, street by street, street by street. Jesus did not drive him, drive her. No, Jesus don't drive her. It is the disciples that told Jesus, Jesus, that woman is disturbing us. Jesus, that woman is, just drive her, let her go. It's getting too much. Look at from street to street. I want to wear shame. It's disorganizing the whole place. There was no microphone. The woman was crying and fighting, disturbing everybody. The disciples met this woman. Say, woman, how your cry is too much. Go. Jesus don't have time for you. Go back. Jesus don't have time for you. You are disturbing us. Go. The woman was crying. That is a cry of faith. That's what I'm telling you. That is a cry of faith. Desperate situation demand a cry of faith. Desperate problem, serious problem needs a cry of what? Of faith. Sometimes you will drop all the guy you have. All the makeup. All the fine clothes you have. You must, you must bring yourself low and like nothing in order to attract the goodness of God. So eventually they ask this, they ask Jesus, this, again, please, let her go. Jesus came and said, look, this man is shouting too much, but in any case, listen to me, woman, They've driven you, refuse to go. My disciples say you should go, you refuse to go. Now, listen to me. Miracle is not for you, not the type like you. You are a sinner. I... Samaritan, no, forget about it. The miracle is for the children, not for you at all. The woman did not get angry. The woman was not offended. They call her dog or goat or dog. 
Yet she was not offended. They sent her away. Yet she still had the faith. They told her, God will not give you any miracle. It's not for you. And yet she has faith. What of if somebody tell you, <laughs> you are going to that church. You think anything will happen to you? Nothing. You are just wasting your time. Just go and come back. Hey, just go and come back. I have gone there too. And nothing happened. I came back. Will you not say? It? It's true. Jesus is the master that is telling the person, say, no, don't worry. You cannot receive a miracle. Not for you. And yet the woman insists, Jesus. Yes, it's true. I cannot receive miracle because I'm not qualified. I'm a sinner. I'm a dog. But when a master is eating, the crumb used to fall from the table to the ground. I want to eat that crumb that fall on the table. Jesus said, what? I don't want to heal this person. This person, faith surprised me. Her cry of faith surprised me. Then Jesus turned his disciple around and said, this woman has the greatest faith. And that is how she was healed of her infirmities. Why? Because she cried a cry of faith. Now, let me tell you something. There is nothing impossible with God. It is only impossible with you because of right of not willing to humble ourselves, not willing to cry, cry of help. Look at that in Luke chapter 18. Look at that the story of the impotent woman. Keep knocking and say, I will never say, take no for an answer. She went to the judge. He said, judge, open the door. You must, my case is beyond what, I don't have a husband. I don't have anybody, but you must do something. The judge don't want to do anything. Say no. And the woman said, since you refuse to refuse to give me a miracle, I will refuse to stop knocking until you do something. I will refuse to stop disturbing heaven until a miracle happen. Do you know what happened? The woman disturbed heaven. Stumble heaven. Stumble the judge. Keep knocking. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Knock and it shall be opened. The woman refused to quit. And eventually, heaven said, ah, this woman is disturbing too much. We are not sleeping because of only this woman. Give her the blessing. Let us rest. May it come to a point. You will pray and God will say, ah, ah, you are disturbing it too much. Take your blessing and leave me. If you believe that, shout a big amen. amen. And that is why we should come to that point where we are desperate and our cry becomes a cry of faith. A cry that will bring miracle. When you look at Psalm 77 verse 1, the Bible says, I cry unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice and he gave ear to me david said i cried to god my voice miracles are real deliverance are real but it takes you to have the faith to cry before god i want to say to you if you cry before god and you receive a blessing do you know who will enjoy it your children will enjoy it you will enjoy it Every part of your life, your family will enjoy it. Your society will enjoy it. Your community will enjoy it. God does not bless a man alone. If he bless you, he bless your generation. He bless your family. He bless everyone around you. I'm glad to announce to you, God will deliver you today. And he will bless you in Jesus' name. God will heal you today. And he will deliver you. And give you a testimony. Amen. Who is the first to receive that testimony? I want you to stand on your feet right now. Lift up your say, My father, my father. My father, my father. Enough, is enough. enough is enough. This demon, this, demon. this, Satan, this Satan, this evil power this has, has held me in captive for too long. From today, From today, 
I detach my spirit. I detach my life. I detach my body. I detach my business. My career. My destiny. My fortune. From the hands of Satan. And evil spirits. Hope you might begin to cry to the Lord right now. Open your mind and begin to pray. And a snake enter you. You wake up from that dream because of that snake that entered you. 
you were so destabilized. What enter you is not a snake. You only saw it in the dream. But what entered you was entered to take your career and your destiny and take it away. So that you will not struggle in life and find it difficult to stand up. What that is said about snake about 20 something years ago. I even told one of our pastors then that I dream so certain that snake enter me. So uh, it did not take it. Uh, maybe it's a bad song. He said, no, maybe baby is called me. I'm not okay. Sickness. He did it the last time. I went, uh, I'm not okay. So doctor said to her, she can do some tests, this and that. That I uh, have uh, diabetes, that my kidney, the vitamin C is too high. Different things like that. Right from that day when snake entered you, that is the beginning of all this suffering. Yes, sir. You yes. started noticing different weird things mm. in your life. Things is not, all this. It's not okay, Every, Even things are scattering. Financial, yes. Financially scattering, everything breaking apart, and all that kind of thing. Yes, sir. Couple with the sickness. Do you think it's what ordinary thing? I know that it's not ordinary. Today, God is setting you free. Amen. Thank God you are here today. It is the vision. The revelation that God picked you out, and today you are free in Amen. Jesus' name. You devil of darkness, you evil python, out in Jesus' name. Amen. Out, 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 out in Jesus' name. Amen. I was told there is someone here now. You are supposed to be the one to serve a particular. They're supposed to handle some certain power to your hand in your village because you are the next to take over that power, that that position. Take over a certain position. It's an idolatrous position. But you resist it. That you are not a child of God. You want to do it. But on our way to you, the goddess of your father, the one that served that thing before, has left and followed you everywhere you go. Today, the Lord is going to deliver you. You said I'm supposed to collect, uh, collect some. Um, powers, idolatry powers for my father. Yes, before he died, he was trying to give me the power. So sometimes in data states, I'll be here hearing my name, glory in the night. And he told me that yes, it's the power that you not go to meet my father in the village, that he wants to transform the power for me. The powers affected me in my academics and my business, go with those people that are supposed to help me to go fast. Sometimes people will promise me and before you know they'll just disappoint me. Today, God is setting you free. Because your day of freedom and deliverance has come. Amen. The power put upon you by the Lord Jesus. You're free from it. They're free. It's free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Thank you, Jesus. It's gone by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. That devil is gone. One again is a dog that met you inside a dream, pursue you, and and this dog it literally bites you. Walk off from that place. You saw the place that bites you in the dream. When it bites you, you wake up. Since that day, everything that is following you is lustful spirit. And scattering of your your everything you are doing, everything you're doing, now begin to scatter. Today is charismata. We are here to deliver you. I dream and it's dog bites me, and I wake up and I saw the mark on my head. You saw the dog bites me, beat you in your dream. Yes. And when you wake up, I you now saw. Can you see the mark? Did you see it here? Thank God, God. You see your mother in this church? Yes. Where's the mother? I declare for the power of you, devil. Out. Out of them. Out of them, Jesus' name. 
from today free from that effect in Jesus name I just saw something now what I saw is this person is immoral affair but not but this one is in dream completely in the dream oh God you made mention of someone that uh, made love with someone in the dream I was born then I forgot not until when my wife came to remind me it's true I had a dream some time ago. My mother died. We buried her like uh, uh, me. And I had a dream that I had an intercourse with her. With another someone that is even dead again. So, so many evil dreams. And since then, I can't just... Things are not working. At all, things are not working again. I'm just forcing myself to be happy. I'm well connected, but they don't even call me again. My business, finance, everything just is it's, it's shattered. Let me just say it. The Lord is going to set you free. Amen. Now, the dream you had and you had intercourse with your mother that have died is a serious attack to destabilize you. To cause total destabilization. Lift up your two hands. Holy Spirit. Out in Jesus. Out. Thank you, Lord. It's going out. It's going out. It's going out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. I give you, I give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Get out in Jesus' name. Yes, thank you, Lord. It's going out. Thank you. The demon is going out. The demon is going out. Out. Jesus name. You are free. I was told there is someone here now. You are supposed to be the one to serve a particular like a, a priesthood or something like that in the village. But you resist it. That you are not a child of God. You want to do it. Has left and followed you everywhere you go. God, you called my case and it is true. You said... Uh... I'm supposed to be the next priestess. They wanted to empower me with demonic power and wealth. But I said I will not do it because, I mean, I've, because I've given my life to Jesus. So my mother told me that I will suffer as Jeremiah suffered. Unless I go and take that power, I can never succeed in life. And it has really been like that. Frustration, financially, materialism, even my children, they are up to marriage age, but no jobs. Ministry, nothing. Even when I start ministry, I'll see that head of Python on top of the pulpit. So that woman has been following me up. Even up. as a pastor, yeah. when you're ministering in your church, yeah. you see the head of a Python yeah. on top of the pulpit. Yeah. Today she, you'll be delivered from it. She wants to make me know that she's around. She'll pull my leg or my hand or shake me like that. The Python way. Pull, shake me or pull shake my you. leg, yeah. So no favor, nothing. So I will never be fulfilled in life. And it has been like that with my children. Poverty, lack, shame, false accusation and all that. Sickness. Do you know that that python you do see ministry on the pulpit, do you know it's meant to scatter you? Yes. You know that? Yes. It's there to kill everything you have. Yes. How many children do you have? Five boys. Five boys. How old are they? Are they finished school? All of them. The eldest is 46. The eldest is 46. And the youngest, 30 plus. Are they married? No marriage now. No, when there's no job, who will marry somebody that has no job? And they are men. Yes. Five boys. No job. He's supposed, she's supposed to be enjoying the children now. Because all of them are finished university. Am I right? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. And now no job. No marriage. Car, devil is wicked. We declare you evil pattern out. You ancestral priest out. You evil, evil head out of our life, out of our children, out of everything. In Jesus' name. From today, no more. And he who God has set free is free indeed. In Jesus' name. No more. From today, you won't see those things again.